Hello, this is Cabo. In this video, I'll be talking about grass. I'll explain the conditions for its growth, how it grows, how fast it grows, how we can use it, and why it's important to know how it grows. So to begin, let's talk about its growth conditions. First of all, if the block above grass has a light level less than 4 and an opacity greater than 2, the grass block will die. So when the grass tries to update, if it finds this condition, it will switch from grass to dirt. If it doesn't find that condition, it will then look at the grass or the block above the grass block and see if it has a light level greater than 8. If it does, it will try to spread. When it tries to spread, it will select some blocks randomly around the grass. It will look at the block above those selected blocks and see if they have a light level greater than 3 and opacity less than 3. If they do, and the, the selected block is dirt, the dirt block will be switched to grass. Let's take an examples of let's look at some examples of this. So we have here a grass block. Previously this was a dirt block and there were some blocks on top. As you can see, most of these allowed the grass to grow, but some of them did not. Slabs, stairs, water and ice do not allow the grass to grow to grow. This is because they don't let light pass through or they have too have a high of an opacity. Also, if it's dark enough, water and ice can cause grass to die because their opacity is too high. Alright, so let's talk about how they actually grow. So, when this condition is uh, met, a grass block will select some blocks around it in a 3 by 3 by 5 situated so that it's one above the block and three below, and one in each of the horizontal directions. It selects four of these blocks and then checks this condition. If the grass block is below a block that has light level greater than 3 and opacity less than 3, then it will switch to grass if it's dirt. So, uh, in order to maximize the number of blocks from which a grass block sp spreads, we would want to set up something like this with dirt rings surrounding the, the grass. On the other hand, if we want to maximize the amount that grass spreads to a dirt block, we'd want to look at something like this. So if we imagine this brown wool as our dirt, our box would look like this, and grass in any of those positions, including the glass, would be valid blocks from which grass can spread to that dirt. So to maximize the number of chances for grass to spread to the dirt, we'd want to configure it like this. Okay, let's talk about how fast it actually grows. So, in order to determine how fast an individual grass block will spread to an individual dirt block, I set up this bud device and I just copied it several times in MC Edit. Basically, it just has a bud switch which causes a block switcher to push a block into this piston tape which will feed in another dirt block. The piston tape is made long so that it gives the grass that gets pushed in plenty of time to die before it comes back up. Uh, in each of these, I have different numbers of grass blocks, starting at 1, 2, 3, going all the way up to 23. Then I have these dispensers attached, which can be toggled on or off by these pistons. Inside the dispensers, it's loaded with redstone. So whenever the bud fires and this is on, the dispenser will dispense one redstone. So I just switch it on for an hour, let it run, after it finished, switched it off, and went through and counted how many redstone had been fired out. And the results are over here. So I have this graph, and in the bottom left you can see there's one, and in the bottom right you can see there's 23. So the one down here was two, up here it was 106, and in between you can see everything is fairly li linear. There's a little bit of variance here and there, but for the most part, it's a linear. So we can extrapolate a linear equation from this, and it works out to be about 4.5 uh, block updates on that dirt block per hour per grass block. So basically, for one grass block, it will cause four growth of grass, four and a half growth of grass per hour, and for one or uh, for uh, 20 it would cause 90 and for 23 is like 103 or something like that um, anyway in terms of minutes the one would be once about every 13 minutes or so whereas 23 would be one about every 35 seconds or so so let's talk about 
what we can actually do with grass growth. This is something that many of you may recognize. It's a light sensor. This one's based on Ethos design. It's a little bit different. It's a little more compact. Instead of using a self-resetting bud and a T flop flop, it sort of combines them into what's called a, a bud flop. The way it works is instead of updating and then self-resetting, it only changes status when there's a cha an update. So if we update it once, it changes status. Update again, it changes status again. I just take it and put it in this, completely closed off so it's dark, and I'll show you how it works. So if we cover it up and make it dark, you can see after some time, this output will change. OK, you can see it changed. Now if I uncover it, you can see the pistons extended, the grass is gone, the water is no longer on that block, so it's clear for grass to grow. And with enough light, the grass should grow after a short amount of time. And as you can see, the output changed, the grass block is back, piston retract, the water found down, fell down, and it's set for the next cycle of darkness. All right, so let's build it. Just extend off of here. So we'll start by placing something other than dirt here. This is where our bud will go. We want something other than dirt so that it doesn't update and cause the bud to retract. All right, so let's put a ring down. And right here, we'll put our sticky piston. We'll attach a block to that. On this stone, we'll put a torch. Now, when this block extends, it will send power from this block to the sides. So we'll put some dust here, to or a uh, repeater here, to take the signal. Send it to this block. Put a torch on the side of this torch, and above it, we'll put a, a block. Now we can get the signal here. Uh, on top of here, we'll put another ring. Powered by this dust, we'll have a piston. Um, and then extending from this block, we'll have dust run around to the back of this piston. It's in the back rather than in the front, because if it were in the front, it could cause a, a block update here, which could cause the piston to retract and, and create a self-resetting bud. OK, so let's put our final layer of grass. And now we can put in our water. All right, and it's not quite ready. We have to get the right order. So we'll put our grass block here. As you can see now, it's light and the grass block is covered by water. So when it becomes dark, it should um, die and then change the piston and be ready for use. OK, one final thing. If you're going to use this, when you close it up, make sure you put torches, or at least one torch down here, so that the grass can spread to this block. Otherwise, if it were completely dark, it wouldn't be able to. And that's all there is to it. If you want the output, you can take it here. Uh, you can take it from the repeater down here, the torch down here. You could also have a block here, Oop, a block here and put another torch here, however you like. Lots of places to take the output. This is a very compact design. It's 3x4x5. Uh, the next smallest that I've seen is a 4x4x5, so it's pretty good. But that's not all we can do with grass. Um, we can also use grass for random timing. And the way it would work is basically the same principle as this. I've got a more compact version here that also takes out the block switcher. So it's just the piston tape, which goes up to a bud. And when the grass grows, it just cycles through the piston tape. And so let's build it. So to build this, it's pretty simple. Let's start at the bottom. Um, here we're going to place a smart piston. And we hook it up like this with a, a repeater. Here, some redstone dust, a torch down here, and a block 
to place the piston. We can get rid of this block if we want. So what will happen is when a block is here, it will power the piston. Now we want the torch here and attach to this block so that when the dust is here it will unpower itself. And the reason for that is we're on a piston here that will become unpowered just enough or for just enough enough time for the block to be pushed out on top. So it looks like that. Let's go ahead and load it up. Okay, so now it's loaded. Now let's do the top. So for the top, we need a block here to push the the block over and a block here to push it down. Okay, now we need to get power, so let's build our bud. Um, we're going to have a downward facing sticky piston here. Put a grass block because we want grass to spread to that. Go three blocks down, put a block, put a torch on top of that. So now when this extends, we can get power off. Let's put a repeater here. Oops, that's not a repeater. Repeater here. Set this to three ticks. We want it at three ticks so that all of this has enough time to go and doesn't cause the the bud to fire again and create a clock. Uh, put a torch on top of here. And a block on top of the torch. And we'll run the power diagonally to this piston. So, uh, the way this self-updates is this torch will affect the air block here, which will cause the piston to uh, update when it's in its off position. All right, so it should work. Okay, and it does. Let's uh, go ahead and connect the rest. So uh, I don't want to cut off the signal, so I'll go ahead and put grass here. Then I'll build out from here and just run redstone straight up to this piston. We don't need any delay on this because we want it to go off as soon as the bud fires. But we do want a delay on this, and if we build it like this, we have redstone here which will power this block. We'll have a torch here, and above that another torch. There should be enough lay delay from the torches for this to fire after uh, that piston, and it will push it down in a cycle. So let's go ahead and test it out. And you can see it works. Let's go ahead and load it up. So now it should be ready to go. We can put our block here, and now when there's an update here, the bud will go off, and everything in this uh, piston tape will get cycled, and we have our timer. Now we can adjust the timing of the timing of the timer by using uh, the formula here. But one thing to keep in mind is if you have a lot of uh, grass blocks, so the timer has a chance to go off very frequently, uh, sometimes it will get stuck like this. Now there are a couple ways to fix that. If you just send a one tick pulse to the bud, you can have it or next to the bud um, right here. So if you send a one tick pulse to this block, it will update the bud and uh, cause it to cycle the piston tape. Or you can manually reset it by putting a repeater here. As you can see, it will toggle it when it uh, is placed, but not when it's removed. Uh, I'll show you an example of how we can set a one tick pulse. If we just take this line and hook up a one tick pulse generator, here's a simple one. So now if we put our button here, whenever we press the button, it sends one tick pulse to this block, which causes a redstone update here, which causes the bud to cycle. Very simple way to reset it. 
you can hook up this one tick uh, pulse to something like a five minute dispenser. So if it doesn't fire for five minutes, you'll have it reset on its own. Very easy way to do that. You can make use of random timers for, of course, doing random timing. So something like getting a random output, um, hook it up to a T flip flop, and you can have random states of doors or uh, flow controls or anything like that. You can uh, also use it for like harvesting at random intervals, whatever you'd like. But that's all there is to it. I'll put the formula for this in the description. Thanks for watching. Please let me know if you thought it was interesting.